Hi there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and the project I am sharing today is creating a landscape scene inside of a larger stamped image. This is a technique that I saw demonstrated, oh, many years ago by uh, Judy Duke, who is one of the owners of B&J's Art Stamps, which is a great little stamp company uh, located in New Mexico. So I haven't seen this too often and I thought I would share it with you guys today. I will be using, um, all the stamps are from B&J's Art Stamps and they are all wood mounted. And then I will be stamping everything in archival jet black ink since I will be coloring with Zig clean color real brush markers and using water. Uh, Archival ink is waterproof, so it works well with anything that involves water. You can color zigs into the, each other, like you can blend them together using other inks like Memento, but if you are going to use water, you need to use a waterproof ink. I am stamping this onto Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, which is a very high quality watercolor paper, but I will talk a little bit about how the zigs work with it in a second. Now I have created this mask where I've cut out most of the buffalo's body. His head is still in place and his tail is still in place, but everything else is pretty much open. So we're gonna be stamping into his body and I've masked off the rest of it. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm using this desert foliage stamp and I'm gonna stamp this into the foreground. So it's into the lower part of his body. So the images mostly go into his legs and a little bit into his, into his uh, lower stomach area, but not too far. Now I have created a mask for that image using a full post-it note and I'm placing that down over that and now I'm going to stamp this small uh, New Mexico mountain stamp into the background a little bit on top of that foliage stamp and into the upper part of his the buffalo's body. And so once I remove the mask you'll kind of get a feel for the scene and how the scene has been created and that's really all there is to it. However, I would say that the thing that really brings it to life is the coloring. So I'm going to start doing that now. I'm using, as I mentioned, I'm using all zigs. Now, uh, I did New Mexico because I recently went to New Mexico for the very first time at the beginning of October. Even though I live in Colorado and I'm only a few hours from New Mexico, I had never been there. Don't ask me why. So I went with my aunt and we had a, just two days of like lots of uh, going around to different places and seeing all the different topography and it is really stunningly beautiful. And that was what inspired me to make this card. It's different from Colorado. The mountains are different from the, the mountains we have in Colorado, but uh, really, really beautiful in their own way. And they are very rocky and very kind of beige, beige reddish with these little pops of green from these bushy trees that grow up and down them, as you can kind of see in this stamped image. So I'm just coloring those in right now. And then I'm, and then in the middle ground, which wasn't really defined by the stamps, I am adding in, oh, sort of abstract clumps of trees because uh, everything we saw the mountains would like come out of sort of these flat lands and the flat land would have lots of those bushy trees kind of growing in big clumps around so it'd be a sort of this green on beige look to it and it was very pretty and very interesting <laughs> so i'm using oatmeal which is a very very beige color for the land and the base coat on the mountains and then i used olive green for the base coat on the trees and then i'm just kind of uh smoothing everything together with water. I don't use water in my water brush. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that's my habit. Um, I think it's because I, I like the brush tip, but I, I want to have more control over the water, so that's why I just dip it into water. And now I am adding in 60 brown, which is like a red brown, to give some detailing to the mountains. I, I said I would talk a little bit about the arches paper. Now, I will say, this did not create a super smooth blend. Um, the places where I colored directly on the paper with the marker didn't smooth out completely. They would leave little dark, sort of darker patches where I actually had colored and I was good with that. Like I liked that. I wasn't going for a super realistic look with this at all. 
I'm really going for much more of a, I hate to say impressionistic, but I guess I'm going to call it impressionistic sort of feel for the scene. I was not paying a lot of attention to where the shadows would be and where the light was hitting it. I mean, maybe just a little bit, but not in any real super hyper realistic way at all. And you can see from sort of the way I color on a lot of the trees in the middle ground, especially, it's all very, you know, abstract. I'm not going for a whole lot of detail at all. And that was purposeful. Like I really wanted to sort of capture the feel of the landscape and not so much the realism of it. I hope that makes sense. And so the arches paper didn't, as I mentioned, didn't like create a smooth blend, but that was okay because I liked the fact that it would just automatically kind of create lights and darks just from having colored on the paper directly. Like I would have like a slightly darker part where I colored and then it would go lighter as I pulled the color out of the water. And that kind of created some texture and dimension all on its own with my, without my having to do much. And then some of these, the foliage towards the bottom here didn't stamp real well. So I actually drew in a lot of those sort of leafy parts directly with the marker. And then when I would watercolor it out, it didn't just totally like smooth out where I drew. It left the drawn lines in and I liked that about it. So that's something to bear in mind with the Arches paper. Now Arches is a really, really high quality watercolor paper, but I have been told by others that zigs are sort of weird with different watercolor paper and that if you want a really smooth blend, the best thing to do is to use Bristol. Um, but I was okay with the not smooth part as I have mentioned so just bear that in mind if that's something that concerns you if you really want a very very smooth blend I would say try try Bristol and and not the arches now for the buffalo I did have to take a look at some pictures of buffalo although we have a lot of buffalo in Colorado um I don't know right off the top of my head where how their you know fur is lighter and darker etc so I looked up photos this is a great thing to do like if you are coloring in animals and especially animals that are a little more realistic than say cartoony looking at photos can be a great way to know how you want to shade them and what colors to use to color them in so it's something to consider if you feel intimidated by coloring animals and so that's how i knew that he has uh, much lighter sort of reddish brown hair on the top of his head and then it and then it gets much darker and almost black like around his eye, his nose, and the sides of his face. So I do wind up using a, quite a bit of black here, although I'm mixing it a fair amount with some mid-brown, and then I do add in some, some of that red or brown for the top of his hair. And then I used oatmeal on his horns, and then I'm just adding in some shading on those red flowers just because I didn't feel like I had enough depth of color, but again, I'm being pretty random about it and not being super concerned about lightness and shadow and you can see I'm just sort of uh, coloring on color on those trees in the middle so it is a fairly impressionistic look and that is the completed buffalo you can see there he's dried and he does dry a little bit lighter than he looked in the coloring for the card base I'm using an A2 sized oatmeal or craft colored card base and I wanted to add a little bit of detailing around him, sort of a frame, if you will. And I have this other uh, somewhat abstract cave painting looking stamp from B&J's. So I was using this and I decided I would stamp it in Versamark and then emboss it in gold to create sort of, again, like a, I don't know, an expressive frame instead of a literal frame, if you will. And so I have just uh, added the gold embossing powder and I'm, this is my little tooth like stiff brush that I use to clean off random uh, embossing powder. And now I'm just going to heat set this uh, to get a nice shine on that embossing powder. If you have not used a heat embossing powder before, I always tell people um, metallics and whites are the best ones to start with because they're easy to tell when they're done because they turn from like a matte to a shiny finish or like with white, it's from like a, 
like almost uh, translucent to a solid and so it's super easy to tell when you should move your heat gun and when that embossing powder has set and you can kind of see it there so that is the completed background for my buffalo and you see i have trimmed him down and mounted him on the front with some black photo corners i liked the black because i thought it brought off some of the black in the drawing especially his fur and then i also like that it is potentially removable now like if you wanted to take the buffalo out and frame him or something you can do that and i added this sort of orangey coppery ribbon as a little bit of an accent and that's the completed card and you can see that the landscape does look like uh i think it looks like new mexico the stamps help give it some definition but i think the coloring adds sort of the feeling of the location and hopefully that makes sense and works for you uh, if you have not done like a scene inside of a larger stamped image it's a fun thing to do and and i have not seen too much of that so it's something worth trying you just need a large a, a large stamp with a lot of open area with which to stamp into thank you so much for watching you can find a complete supply list for this project below in the video description if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and i would be absolutely thrilled if you'd subscribe to my channel Thanks again. Have a great day.